welcome you to our program today. Our special guest is Kurt Ehlinger. He's from here in Dubuque, Iowa. And so Kurt, so good to have you on the show today. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Kurt is uh, a man of great inspiration. It's amazing what he is uh, doing. And right now he's uh, gonna be on, uh, to be talking about MS, Run the US. And so this is a, a big uh, event that he is doing to bring awareness to uh, MS or multiple sclerosis. And so, Kurt, um, well, let's just talk a little bit about this. You sure. Know, so what are you doing and why is this so important? Yeah, so MS Run the U.S. is an annual relay across the country. Um, it's 19 runners and they start, uh, we start in Los Angeles every year and run to New York from mid-April to mid-August. Um, and every runner runs approximately an average of six days and over those six days, they cover approximately a marathon. And some of the segments are five days, some are seven. The segment I'm running is nine segments. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's important to me anyway, because I think it's a good way for me to use something that God has blessed me with, um, and that is the ability to run very far and not stop, um, and to help raise awareness and bring mm -hmm. awareness to multiple sclerosis and what it does um, to people that are suffering from it. Mm -hmm. So, as um, Kurt is saying here, is that this is a relay across the United States. But in this relay with the runners, that each runner is running, well, in this case, Kurt is running nine days, and each one of these days he's running the equivalent of a marathon, and that's 26.2 miles. Now, when you think about 26.2 miles, a lot of times we think of how many people would want to have just really in the relay for for that distance so right. I think this is really quite um, yeah. quite a monumental feat that you and these other runners are doing to have this being a relay across the United States but it's for a very important reason and that is um, to raise awareness for multiple sclerosis MS and so so maybe to explain a little bit uh, here again I think MS is one of those very uh, tough diseases. I mean, no, yes. no disease is fun, but MS is, right. you, know, you know, people can live with MS and, you know, live a pretty good quality of life, but it is a debilitating disease. And, and a lot of us are concerned, as we know people who have this, but, but how did MS become such a, you know, to run for MS or for this cause became such a passion for you? Sure, sure. So when I was eight years old, um, my mom was diagnosed with MS and she is, um, she was the mother of four young kids. I'm the oldest and my youngest brother was just six months old when she was diagnosed. Mm -hmm. And so as a family, that was really, um, it was a scary time because we didn't know, all we knew was mom was sick as kids and we didn't know what was wrong, but she would be sometimes in bed for weeks at a time. Um, and you couldn't go in and get on the bed because the bed would you know, and make the room spin for her and she'd get sick. And so it was just really scary. Um, and then eventually she was diagnosed with MS. Um, and back then they didn't have um, modern technology they have today. So they, it wasn't with an MRI or um, tests from the spinal fluid. Mm -hmm. It was more of an elimination. They eliminated other issues. And so that's how she was diagnosed. Um, and I remember as a, a little kid, you know, she was very active very energetic. She would play kickball in the street with us and be pretty excited. And so we were wondering, well, is mom ever going to be able to do that again? Um, and one memory that really sticks out to me is we went to a support group for MS and all the people in the room were in wheelchairs. And so we were thinking, oh, is that what's going to happen to our mom? Is she going to be in a wheelchair? Um, and thankfully that has never happened. She's still um, able to walk. Um, but it was a really kind of um, just a tough time as, as a young child. And I remember, um, you know, thinking as a, as a young child and as I became a teenager, you know what, maybe I'll be a doctor and I can, you know, help figure out what causes this disease and come up with a cure. Well, I never became a doctor. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't really even start this whole endurance athlete stuff until probably about nine or 10 years ago and just learned that, um, you know, I have a gift from God to run very far and not stop. Mm -hmm. And so about four years ago, I learned about MS Run the U.S. Um, and ran for them 
three years ago, um, two different segments um, in, this, in that summer. Um, and part of the reason why I'm doing it is so that we can raise awareness. I mean, that's the big thing. You all, we also have to raise money. But I always felt if we raise awareness, get the word out there, that that will just, that will just come. And my goal is that we can someday have a day where no other little child has to hear the words, your mom or dad has a mess. And so that's mm -hmm. why this is so important to me and why I'm so passionate about it. And, and even outside of the running involved with the organization itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well that's um, you know, certainly well, quite a passion that you have to be able to do that, but just that idea or, or what you said, that no child would ever have to hear right. that your mother or your father has MS. In other words, you know, what a, a day to rejoice and what a miracle that would be to be yes. able to find a cure for this disease. And so you, you look at um, doing something like this, raising the awareness and, and raising money, you know, to, you know, to support the, the fight yep. you know, for a cure. And so, you know, that's something that we all, you know, certainly want to be involved with is saying in whatever ways that we can, that we can do. Maybe not all of us can get out there and, and run, um, you know, nine consecutive days running uh, basically, you know, the distance of a marathon. But, you know, I'm sure there's all kinds of ways that we can, you know, bring awareness and, you know, generate support, you know, to fight uh, such an important, or to be part of such an important cause to find a cure for multiple sclerosis. And so, when you think about multiple sclerosis, like you were saying, there was a time when because I think a lot of times, you know, people can have symptoms of it, or, or a lot of times it takes it would take a long time right. to actually to bring a diagnosis. That sometimes the symptoms are this, so they think it's this or that. And, and today, would you say you mentioned like a spinal tap, or, or maybe um, some kind of a, a scan can help uh, determine whether or not you have MS. You know, but that are there different kinds of forms of MS too? That yeah, there's or? there's actually four different kinds of MS. Mm -hmm. And I mean, to back up from that just a little bit, let's just talk about what MS MS actually is. So MS, multiple sclerosis, stands for many scars. Um, and what that means is, in our body, someone that has MS, their immune system attacks their own nervous system, and so it affects the brain, the spinal cord and the optic nerve. And what it does is we have a protective sheath around our nerve called myelin. And so it attacks, attacks that. And what it does is it basically ruins that sheath and it causes scarring. So someone that has MS, when their brain sends a signal to their body, it hits those scarred parts of, of the, where the nerve coating has been scarred. And either that message is jumbled or it's completely lost. And so that's what causes the symptoms of MS. So, and that's why it's so broad as far, and why it affects every patient so differently because it all depends on where those scars are, right? Um, so an easy way to think about it is we all have phone chargers now, you know, mm -hmm. that we go to f charge our phone. And a lot of times, at least I have this happen, the end of the phone charger that goes in your phone gets all frayed and kind of ratty. And sometimes you plug it in and it charges and other times it doesn't and you gotta wiggle it around and stuff. And so that's really what's happening to someone's nerves that has MS is, that coating or that sheathing is, is, is torn away. So that's really what MS is. And then there's really four different forms. I can talk about three of them. Um, th the most common is relapsing remitting MS. And what happens with that is um, a patient that has that, they'll have what they call attacks or flare-ups of MS. And so what happens is that's when the body is actually being attacked and that myelin is being damaged. Um, and so they have a flare-up of symptoms, or it might be, you know, right after that happens. And so they have that flare-up, and then it seems like everything kind of goes away and things are okay. Now, there are residual effects from that, but um, that's kind of what happens, and it's unpredictable. So, I mean, someone that has MS, I mean, it's hard to really plan your day because you don't know, you know, you could feel fine today, wake up tomorrow, and, you know, your world is spinning, um, or you're having trouble walking because one of your legs doesn't want to work. Um, so that's the first and most common type of MS. And then that can um, advance to primary or secondary progressive MS, which is what my mom has now. She had relapsing remitting and now she has secondary progressive. And that's just kind of, it's a more of a steady um, decrease in, 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 
in, in your being able to do different things with your body and um, it's just a little bit more of advanced form of the disease. And then probably the worst is primary progressive and what happens there is it's just an, a continual just um, degrade of, of you know your body functions and so a lot of times you'll meet people that have that and they're the people that are, end up in wheelchairs and um, just really have a, a struggle with doing every day what things that we take for granted. Mm -hmm. Yeah so it's the immune system that attacks the myelin of our nerves yep. and, and so then you know, some of the symptoms and what are some of the signs and symptoms that, that people that would kind of indicate like you mentioned you know, like some dizziness or spinning, and then you know, maybe a, yeah. a weakness in a leg or noticing that a leg is yeah. kind of dragging a little bit. Yeah, so the, mm. so the symptoms are really far ranging and they're different for every, every um, patient. Um, and that's, they call it the snowflake disease because no two people that have MS are basically, that they, they don't have the exact same symptoms. Okay. So some of the symptoms my mom had or has is she's got double vision, she's got blurred vision, um, she has balance issues, so in walking sometimes it's her equilibrium's thrown off so she has trouble walking. And then she has um, uh, what they would call drop foot. So basically what happens is your foot just, your leg just doesn't work and so trying to walk, it's really hard to pick up your leg and so she trips a lot, she's had a lot of falls over the years. Um, mm -hmm. So those are some symptoms that are really directly related to her. Other symptoms are, um, I have a friend, uh, very, he's become a very good friend that lives in Pennsylvania. He was on his way to being in a wheelchair, was slowly um, digressing and was walking with a cane. Um, and one day said, you know what, this is the way I wanna live anymore. And so he went downstairs and got on his treadmill and started walking and now he's a marathon runner. Um, He's going to run his, I think his fourth consecutive Boston Marathon this coming Monday. Um, so he's a real inspiration, but when I go running, I go, I put on my shoes, I go out the door and I run. When John, my friend needs to run, there's so many other things he has to worry about. He can't look down, because if he looks down, he's gonna fall over, because it throws off his balance. But even worse than that is, he's gotta be very cognizant of his body temperature, because one of his symptoms, and I forget the, the medical term for it, but if his body temperature rises above a certain temperature, he's, he goes temporarily blind and he can't see. So when John runs, he packs his arms and his hat and his core in ice, and that's how he's able to run. So, um, so that's another symptom that, that, that can happen. Um, another big one, and, and this is where, um, MS is also called the invisible disease because you can look at someone and say, well, they, they don't look sick at all. They look just fine. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the big things that a lot of people suffer with MS is MS fatigue. And what MS fatigue is, is you take probably your worst day that you feel the most tired and the most worn out mm -hmm. and multiply that by about 100. And that's how someone with MS feels a lot of times, not even at the end of their day, but an hour or two into their day. It's mm -hmm. just just really draining. It, it feels like, you know, a lot of times I used to describe, uh, you know, how my mom felt as though it was like someone that had the flu every day of her life. And mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I'm miserable when I have that. I don't know mm -hmm. how, I mean, that's where I get my inspiration. And when I'm running these endurance events, um, whether it be an ultra, uh, ultra marathon or an Ironman, and I think, man, I, I'm really tired and it really hurts. I just think of my mom and the perseverance that she had to just every day just to live. Mm -hmm. And that is um, inspiring. Um, and I think a lot of that comes from um, her faith as well, is mm -hmm. um, those walks every day. The reason it was so crushing to her, um, and I don't know if I mentioned this, but she used to walk three miles a day. And in the last year that has, has stopped because MS just doesn't allow her body to go that far. And those walks, became very important to her, not just because of what it did for her physically, but um, she always used to say, um, it was my time to um, walk and gawk with God. And uh -huh. so, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so that's something, you know, that has been stolen from her. And that's a, that was a very important part mm -hmm. and piece of her life. And so, um, you know, th that's why I'm just so passionate about this and think that we have to figure out um, how do we how do we find a cure for this disease or at least if we can't find a cure how do we 
um, take care of the symptoms that people are suffering from so that they, they can live a, a, a more mm -hmm. productive and, and enriched life. <coughs> yeah, I mean, that's really amazing what you're talking about, like your, your friend John, yeah. who runs the Boston Marathon, who, you know, obviously all of a sudden one day just started to walk and then run, and, and now look what he's worked up to, sure. even though it, it's very difficult. But then also your mother and how she was able to get up and get walking and you know, walk three miles a day and how important that is. and but to show the ability to be able to, you know, hopefully uh, maximize, you know, the ability, you know, what you have in each day. But, but still, you know, the symptoms are, are something that, you know, if nothing else, to try to curb those or eliminate some of the, those, you know, so that you can live a, yeah. it's amazing, you know, what, what, what they can do. And, mm -hmm. and let me just expound on those three mm -hmm. miles a day, how we got mm -hmm. there. Is that all right? Yeah. Um, so, when mom was diagnosed 40 years ago, um, the, basically what they told you to do as an MS patient is go home, don't overexert yourself, rest, take it easy, um, and then just wait, because eventually you're gonna be in a wheelchair. And my father, who, um, just an amazing man, I mean, he taught us so much about love, just how he um, took care of our mom and took care of us, and just, I mean, just a very selfless man. Um, but he would go and work a factory job at John Deere every day, and he would come home and have to take care of, I was the oldest at the time, There's, I was eight, there was four of us, the youngest was six months old. And he'd come home and he'd make dinner, he'd give baths, he'd help with homework, he'd put us all in bed, and one day he was driving home and he just said, you know what, I, I, we can't keep doing this, I can't keep doing this. And so he got home that day and he went into the bedroom and said to my mom, we're gonna, we're gonna, come on, we're gonna get up and go for a walk, and she said, I can't. And he said, well, we're going to try. And so that day they walked from the bedroom to the front door and eventually they got to the driveway and then eventually to the end of the street and eventually they were, mom got up to three miles a day and she did that for 38 years and there was nothing that was going to stop her from doing that. Um, and so from a physical standpoint, that was a blessing, but it was also a blessing and an answer, I think, to a prayer that she had. And I didn't realize this until just recently um, but that she shared this with me, but when she was laying there in that bed, she would pray to God and say, God, all I want to do is take care of my kids. That's all I want to do. Please let me take care of my kids. Because um, as a mother, that's what she wanted to do. Um, and so I think dad coming home and, and making her get up and walk and seeing that, hey, we can do this, I think that was God's, that was, that was the answer to that prayer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think, so in more ways than one, that, mm -hmm. that, that, act of love for my dad had, had made a difference in all of our lives. And so basically a lot of what, the encouragement for your, your mother and to so many is, well, just try to be calm and, and don't exert yourself in any way because if you do that is going to just accelerate this disease. But maybe what you're finding or what they're finding is that getting some exercise actually you know, keeps you stronger and, yeah. and, and is actually yeah, helpful. Yeah, and, and now, that's what they, now that's what they tell them to do. They well, they are, okay. The more that mm -hmm. you can do to exercise and stay active, the better. So that's mm -hmm. completely changed from 40 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Well, what a blessing, though, that your mother was able to be able to do this. And, and the main thing is that, you know, her motivation to be able to take care of you and raise your kids, you know. Yes. What a blessing that that is. Okay, well, run... MS Run the U.S., and that's what uh, Kurt is going to be doing here. It's a relay across the United States for which he will be running uh, nine days. I mean, his, his segment is running nine days, 26.2 uh, miles uh, per day, and that is running a marathon for basically nine consecutive days. And so I, this is pretty impressive. And so just running one marathon that uh, takes an awful lot and a lot of recovery. And so one of the questions that I have to ask you, Kurt, is <laughs> how are you training to do this? <laughs> <laughs> well, the short answer is you run a lot, <laughs> right? Um, and so um, I've, I've been on an ultra, so an ultra marathon is um, when people that do ultra marathons, that's anything up past a 26.2 miles. Um, so 50 miles, 100 miles, and I have a lot of friends that do that. Um, and so I've been on that type of plant training plan since mm -hmm. January. Um, I'm also a triathlete, so 
Um, one of the things that I that was important to me um, selfishly is that I do have a triathlon racing season after this so um, to be able to to be ready for that I also swam twice two days a week and biked two days a week through through the winter and through all this training and I think that cross training has helped me remain healthy um, because I've increased my my weekly mileage when I'm training for an Ironman, I train probably, I run 20 to maybe 35 miles a week. Um, and through this training I've worked up to for the last several weeks, I've been running uh, more than 70 miles a week and some weeks almost 90 miles a week. Mm -hmm. And so a big part of it is listening to your body. Um, and it, it, that's ironic that, you know, we're running for this cause that affects your body so much. Mm -hmm. So as runners, we really have to pay attention. And when there's something that's going on, you have to pay attention to that because if you don't, it could be end up in a, a, a big problem. And so the big thing is get the miles in, um, and then after that, make sure that you recover well. So I do a lot of things after running. Um, I roll out with a foam roller. Um, a lot of times, I'll um, as odd as this sounds, I use a golf ball and um, roll that underneath my feet. Um, uh, I do have some recovery boots that I that I put on. Um, and, and, and use occasionally or regularly. Um, and then the other thing is just making sure that you're getting adequate rest, which I am not good at. I mm -hmm. mean, I need to do better at that. Mm -hmm. um, that, that has uh, um, been my biggest obstacle. Mm -hmm. um, and then also just eating right. So eating clean and eating healthy um, and making sure that you're getting enough calories in because that, too often I think when people are, are um, you know, really, um, taxing their body they don't get enough nutrition and enough mm -hmm. calories and so um, a lot of times you know you're eating and eating and you're like I'm going to put on all this weight and I don't want to do that but the reality is your, your body needs those calories so it's just a matter of of doing all of that and then changing your running form I'm not running these nine days anything like I would run if I was racing a, a marathon or racing a triathlon I wouldn't be able to do it if I if I did that so it's a matter of running differently training your body to run that way, um, slow down, um, take walk breaks on a regular basis to help. That, that actually aids in the recovery um, every day after the run because it helps reduce the buildup of lactic acid in your legs. So um, it's just a combination of all of that. Mm -hmm. So like with your diet, is there certain uh, food groups or types of food that you eat? Are there fruit, a lot of fruits, pasta? What would, what, what would you say is the basis I of your- I think the biggest thing is to eat clean. Um, and when I say clean, try to reduce the amount of um, manufactured or processed food that you eat. Um, and again, I don't do a great job of that, but I try mm -hmm. to do the best. Um, and so it's just a matter of, I mean, I, I eat a lot of lean meats, not a whole lot of red meat, um, not because I don't want to or, or dislike it. I just, it just seemed to be, I, my body reacts better if I'm not putting a lot of that in. And then a lot of, and this is tough for me, I don't particularly care for vegetables, but I eat a lot of vegetables, um, a lot of fruits, and then um, a, lot of, a lot of carbohydrates that you get through good carbohydrates. Um, and then the other big thing is hydration. I mean, you can't drink enough um, water and, and get enough, um, you know, refueling after mm -hmm. your runs to make sure that you're well hydrated, because that's going, to, that's going to, to take you down just as quick as anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's very important to be eating right and be hydrated and and to listen to your body to to know that you know there maybe yeah. there's a time to slow down or to stop or to rest uh, things like that. Okay, well here again, uh, Kurt is running and he's doing this to raise awareness, but also to raise uh, funds. And so we think about how you know how. You know, Kurt's doing the running, but we can all you know support him. And so I'm thinking about how can people best support you um, financially? How, you know, like if people wanted to give a donation, what's the best way to go about yeah, that? Yeah, so I have a website that people can go to and donate. It's www.tinyurl.com mm -hmm. slash NMS19. So they can just go out to that. And um, in addition there, there's more additional information as far as while, why I'm doing this. There's links to my Facebook page, which also has a fundraiser uh, attached to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have, um, I have a blog that, that, mm -hmm. I've, um, that I write, um, would like to write more regularly on, but um, several years ago, I wrote a whole bunch of stories on people living with MS, took mm -hmm. different people and wrote on there so you can learn more about the disease and how it really affects people. There's a story on there, my mom's story, and then I wrote one 
my story is as kind of a reflection of, of an eight-year-old child. So there, there's, those are the places that you can go to learn more and, and to support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we have all that up on the screen so that if you want to support Kurt or just learn more about um, uh, MS and in here again, uh, you know, as far as uh, the whole family and, and how you know, to help cope and deal with this, that, you know, all that is very important as well. And so now, when, when does this all start? When, when's your first time out there? So, my, so I actually leave a week from tomorrow. So tomorrow is uh, April 12th. Um, and then um, a week from Monday is when I start. So April 22nd, I start and I'll run for nine days, um, starting in Las Vegas, Utah. So we'll run through the desert out of Nevada and into the mountains in, in Utah to a little tiny town called Milford, Utah. Okay. It's probably a population of, mm -hmm. I don't know, 3,000. Um, and then that'll, so I'll start on the 22nd, Monday the 22nd, and nine days later um, on uh, April 30th, I'll finish. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be quite the nine days. So when I think about you know, like running from Las Vegas into Utah, is this going to be like desert and then you kind of get into the mountains yeah. or the terrain? I would think that it's one thing to run 26 miles, but it's another thing to run 26 miles in the heat or running up a mountain. Yeah, so <laughs> it's, going to be, it's going to be a bit of a challenge because mm -hmm. it's going to be in the desert. Um, there's going to be some country roads that we're going to be on, mm -hmm. unpaved. Um, and I'm coming out of probably our coldest winter in several years, so I'm not used to running in the heat. So that'll be a challenge of trying to figure out how we're going to control that. Um, and then as we run up into the mountains, it's obviously going to get colder. So mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of challenges and things that we need to do with that. And so you have a support team with you then? Yeah, we have a road crew that is with us. So um, we actually have an RV that goes across the country with us that um, we stay in. And then um, that road crew is out on the road with us every day. And they're no further mm -hmm. away than three or five miles from us at any given point in time. And so they meet up with us on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Well, Kurt, we just want to thank you so much for being with us here today. Uh, this has been very um, informative, but also very inspiring. And, you know, obviously you are an inspiration uh, to all of us. And, and as you've drawn reference, you know, just how, you know, God has been such an inspiration to you and, you know, giving you that strength to be able to, to run the race that God has set before you. And, and so um, I know that a lot of people are pulling for you and, and I know that as you run, your mother is right there yep. with you, as well as, you know, so many others who are suffering with this terrible disease. Well, thank you all for joining us this day as well. Thank you.